It's time to go on a journey, a search for treasure. This is no ordinary treasure though. This priceless discovery contains God's word, including secrets from the past and future that will change your life. Welcome to Bible Treasures. Hey, Elizabeth. Hi, Lori. How was your ride? It was great. I found so many fossils. I wish I could have gone. Oh, me too. Hey, guys. Hey, Sam. What's wrong? I, I can't remember how to throw a boomerang. A boomerang? Really? Huh? But eventually, it came back to me. Oh, <laughs> I got it. That was so hey, fun. everybody. How's it going? Hey. Why don't you come on in, guys? Man, I'm so excited to see you guys today. Another day on the dig is always a good day. Yes. yes. <laughs> My name is Rich Aguilera, and welcome to Bible Treasures. We have an awesome team assembled, as always. Let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Elizabeth, and I'm your computer ops girl. Awesome. And I'm Sam, your expert when it comes to historical documents. And I'm Nori, and I love digging into our treasure chest for more artifacts. Cool. Well, you know what? Before we get started, why don't we sharpen and stretch out our Ooh. brains a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. With a brain teaser. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. yes. I love testing you guys to see if you guys can think of these things. All right, mm. I got a really good one for you guys. Here we what go. If an electric train is going west at 90 miles per hour yes. and there is a strong easterly wind, mm. which way does the smoke from the train drift? That's a really hard one. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, ooh, hey, I think we got a message from ooh, headquarters. Oh, oh, that's out. so exciting. See if we got a new assignment. At church last week, the pastor said we need to depend on God. Does that mean I don't have to do anything and God will take care of everything? Wow, well that's an interesting question. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out if he's being a little sarcastic. Yeah, me well, too. You know what? Sometimes when people are a little confused, it might come out as sarcastic. Yeah, How that's should true. We respond. Yeah. How should we? Well, you know what? First things first. Let's kind of get this really good oh, question. Write it down in our journal. In our journal. Just write it down. How dependable yes, is God. God? That's a great mm. question. Yep. And you know what? I'm already thinking of what we need to do. What do we need to what? do? There's an artifact I'm thinking of that oh, will help us. Cool. Yeah. Can you dig it up for us, Horace? It's, um, I think it's 42C. 42C. Yeah. Is it? It's amazing how oh. we can get cool lessons out of different little artifacts. Here it is. Yeah, this is, is really awesome. cool. Hey, oh, thank wow. you. Wow, I love that design. Well, look at that. Isn't this nice? This yeah. is a pillowcase. Oh. A pillowcase. It's a pillowcase. Pillow and I brought it from a country called Peru. Ooh, oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I know where Peru is. Can you, you want me to show it to you? That'd be great, that? Sam, if you could show it to us. It's right here. Oh, That's cool. right. My Brazil. That's Peru. You know what? We could probably learn a lot if we check out a location oh, yeah. brief. Let's yes. Elizabeth, you think there's one on the computer we can oh, look at? Yeah. Awesome. Location Brief, Peru. Lake Titicaca is a large deep lake in the middle of the Andes Mountains between Peru and Bolivia. The elevation of this lake is over 12,500 feet above sea level, making it one of the largest and highest navigable lakes in the world. It's a very big lake, measuring 118 miles long and 50 miles wide. At its deepest, it's almost 1,000 feet deep. The climate here is cold and dry year-round because of the high altitude. Many visitors often get altitude sickness when visiting Lake Titicaca. Since the lake is surrounded by mountains, there are many rivers and streams that feed into the lake. And in the lake, there are 41 unique islands, some which are densely populated. Strangely, there is only one river that flows outward, and it's a small river, draining only 5% of the excess water. The other 95% is lost to evaporation from the sun and from strong winds. There are hundreds of different Incan ruins in this region, and many historians claim that this is where the Incan Empire began. 
one of the islands alone, Isla del Sol, has 180 ruins. One of the most unique people groups of the area are the Euros people that live on Lake Titicaca on small man-made islands built from layers of Totora reeds. Another unique group is the people that live on the island of Amantani. There are no cars or any kind of machines on the island, so everything is done by hand. This lake is no doubt one of the most fascinating lakes in the world. This concludes this location brief. Well, that's Beautiful. so cool. Wow, yeah. that's a cool place. Yeah, really cool. I got to travel there not too long ago. Oh, oh awesome. really? But we went to a really cool part of Peru called Lake Titicaca. Oh, I've never oh, heard of that. that yeah, familiar. it's right on the border of Peru and Bolivia. But hmm. the cool thing oh. is, is that on this lake, there is a group of people that have been living on the lake. Really? On the lake? On the lake. And how is that possible? And they've been there for hundreds of years. <gasps> oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. years. They're called the Uros people. What is oh. that? Well, this is an interesting culture of people that decided to build islands hmm. that float on the lake. Oh, oh cool. wow. Yeah. So we oh, decided, cool. wouldn't it be cool if we can spend some time there with the Uros people? Mm -hmm. It would be cool. They're really isolated because they're way out in the lake mm -hmm. and very few mm -hmm. people know about them, but we were able to get an opportunity to go spend time with them. Cool, yeah. that's awesome. So awesome. we went to this town. The town was called Puno, and when we arrived, a man picked us up in the center of town, took us in a taxi to the edge where there was like a little dock, mm -hmm. and then we got on this little itty bitty boat. I mean, it was like <laughs> twice as long as this table. Oh, wow, that's, that's so small. small. That's it. And then we started chugging out into the middle of the lake. <laughs> <laughs> And right away, eventually, we arrived to this little community of islands. If I'm Ooh. not mistaken, there was about 80 islands. 80? Oh, wow. that's, that's a lot, lot of islands. Yeah, wow. and, and each one is very small because there's only about two or three families at the most that live on each oh, island. Okay. What? Yeah, and these people decided that they could take us to their island where we would get to visit and stay with them for a whole oh, day. How was so their culture? It was really different. It was amazing because... So each family has their own island? Their own island, and they share that's different awesome. parts. It was very cool. Yeah. Now, I was super curious, and I was wondering, what, how in the world could they make an island, and how could it just float? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, we learned a lot about the Uros people because it turns out they make their island out of a Totora plant. What's a Totora, Totora plant? plant? Yeah, it's a reed, you know those grassy tall reeds right. that grow yeah. on the edges of the lake? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. at Lake Titicaca, there's a lot of reeds that grow around the edges. Ooh. Oh, okay. And cool. the Uros people really depend on those Totora plants for everything. Everything? Oh, wow. Yeah. Everything. I mean, besides building their island out of Totora, I mean, there was super thick piles up of Totora, and they build up their island and it floats. Well, what yeah. would happen if there was no Totora? They would be in trouble. Yeah. They that's really true. depend on the Totora. And it's wow. not just the island, they actually build their house out of the Totora. Their house? Really? They build boats out of the Totora. So it could easily fall over. You would think so, but the yeah. Totora plant is really dependable. They wow. even eat the Totora. <laughs> It's so amazing. that would be like eating your own house. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's so now amazing. the cool thing is that first evening that we got to be there, um, they sat us down and they gave us dinner and we got to eat together. Oh, they're nice really people. Nice. Oh, they were super friendly. And the cool thing is we got to ask questions. Ooh. They took us out on the boat. They showed us how they would fish, and oh, it was awesome. really cool. I do that. But Me that too. night after supper, their young teenager, a guy that was kind of like your age, oh. came oh. out, and you know what? what? He had made this. Oh. Yep, and he wanted to see if I wanted to buy it. Oh, you, so you bought it? You absolutely, got it. absolutely. I was like, oh, I would love to buy this from you. <laughs> so he told me how he made it and how he depended on selling little things here and there so that they can kind of support themselves. And their family, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. So I got to thinking, man, I definitely want to support him. And it made me also think of how much they depend on the Totora reeds yeah, that's for survival. True. And just as the question today was talking about, I think there's a Bible verse that reminds us how much we need to depend on God. Oh, there you is. want me to look it up? Could you? Could you find a good sure. verse for us? I think there's what one in it? Mark 13, 31. Hmm. Mark 13, Mark 13, 31. 31. There's a good verse in there that shows us exactly what we're trying to teach here. Oh, it here it is. Right about here. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. 
Mm, what does that mean? It means God's words are dependable. Yeah. yeah. Everything else will come and go, but God's words will stay forever. Yay! Now like that's dependable. Plant. Yeah. yeah. Well, but the Torah plant doesn't stay forever. Well, That'd be kind of really. cool, right? <laughs> but it's very dependable. It's very dependable. Very depend God's word is very dependable. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. You know what? We've got to write this verse down in, in our journal. journal. Yes, good verse to remember. That was uh, Mark. 1331. 1331. Cool. Do you have any pictures from Peru? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I did bring some back. I think they're on the file too. Oh, they're on the file. Elizabeth, look up the file that's these. called uh, the Uros people, I think. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. There it is. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow, their yeah. houses are so wow. cute. Cool. And that one, that one's even better. That's it's awesome. awesome. It's like going Today's question is interesting because yeah. although the treasure text reminds us that God is dependable, the question also asks if that means we don't have to do anything and that we can just sit back and God will take care of everything. I think God wants each one of us to be responsible for doing our part. The Bible speaks many times about how bad it is to be lazy yeah. and how everyone needs to help with various responsibilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminded me of that young teenager on that floating island that <laughs> sold me this pillowcase. <laughs> yes, God is providing them with the wonderful Totora reeds that sustain their lives there, but these families still have to go out and work for themselves too. Mm -hmm. yeah. In this case, that son went beyond the Totora to make these neat handmade items mm -hmm. so that he could sell them to help his family. I thought that was awesome and that's why I bought it. I wanted to support the young man because I think that he was being a great example for young people everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. Yeah. Each one of you also has things that you can do to help your family. I think God wants each one of us to be a big helper wherever we are. Mm -hmm. When you're at home, you shouldn't be lazy and sit around while everyone else provides for you. Mm -hmm. no. You should do your part too. You can right. clean your room, make your bed, help do chores around the house. Yeah. Yes, God is dependable. But I hope you will decide today to also be dependable to your family by helping to do your part. And by the way, if you do it with a long, grumpy face, that doesn't really count. No, that doesn't count. Do it with a joyful heart. Yeah. yeah. God has set the ultimate example. Heaven and earth may come and go, as the Bible verse says, but God will always be dependable. Let's you and me do the same, yeah. just like it says there in today's Bible treasure. Yeah. Hey guys, yeah, let's have a closing it. prayer. Oh, yeah, we, we should invite the crew. Let's yeah. bring them in. Let's Do bring them in. Nice hey guys, come on in. Would uh, one of you guys like to pray for us? Oh, sure. I would. I'd awesome. love to. Awesome. Let's awesome. Do it. Let's bow our heads. Dear Jesus, thank you for just being so dependable and creating us and just knowing that we can always look to you when we have problems. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, do you guys want to hear the answer oh, to the, the brain, brain teaser? teaser. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that was a hard one, I think. Yeah, Let's see if you guys right. can figure it out. Let me read it for you guys again. Okay. If an electric train is going west at 90 miles per hour west. and there is a strong easterly wind, Easter. which direction will the smoke from the train drift? East? Yeah, that's yeah, what I would say. I don't know. No. I think I know. What, what? is it? It's an electric train. There is no oh, smoke. That's it. <laughs> You guys got it. I get it. I'm so glad you joined us today for Bible Treasures. Don't forget to search for treasure every day. See you next time. Let's go out to the big Let's site, guys. Artifact? Yeah, bring that with us. So we can take a look space. at it. Wow. I bet you we're going to find some pretty cool stuff today. Yeah.